So 99% of developers don't really get Docker. Now, if you've been in the AI field long enough, you've probably heard the term Docker, but most people have no clue what Docker does or what it actually is. In this video, I'll clearly explain the concept of Docker and why every AI developer needs to use it. Real quick, I'm hiring a second video editor. So if you know someone or if you are an editor yourself, make sure to apply, the link will be below the video. So here are the fundamentals. Docker lets you package an app and all of its dependencies into a single portable container. This solves a clear problem, making sure that whatever you build, AI agent, your AI SaaS, runs the same on every single machine. So for AI agents, that container could include your requirements TXT file, your Python environment, libraries, tools, whatever else your agent needs. To put it simply, Docker is the ultimate solution for the it runs for me problem. And that's because when building software, even a tiny change in the version can break the whole app. For example, your AI agent runs locally, but on a server with a different Python version or CUDA, it doesn't work. This is especially painful when working with a team, where skipping Docker could mean constant setup bugs, slow onboarding and fragile deployments. Now, because Docker solves a real painful problem for developers, its revenue has been on an exponential trend. And you can see that the bigger a company gets, the more likely it is to adopt Docker. These are the top technologies running on top of Docker. Number one, Nginx, number two, Redis, and number three, Postgres. Now, the reason all of these successful projects use Docker is because it packages everything. So once you configure it, your app will run the same on any machine that has Docker. So you can run multiple projects with conflicting requirements side by side without them interrupting and interfering with each other. You can also spin up dozens of identical copies across multiple servers, which obviously is great for scaling. Now, the first concept you must understand is the Docker image. A Docker image is a read-only package with everything needed to run your app. So that could be the code, runtime, all the dependencies, whatever is required to run your program. It's a template Docker uses to create and start containers. And don't worry, I'll explain the concept of containers in a bit. Docker images can be shared and downloaded, such as on Docker Hub, so you don't have to manually rebuild environments. Here are some of the most useful commands when it comes to Docker image management, but thanks to LLMs, we don't really have to remember these. So feel free to screenshot this or just ask an LLM the next time you need one of these. The second concept you must understand is the Docker file. This is a text file that contains step-by-step -step instructions for building a Docker image. Each line in the Docker file, so you can see an example here, performs a specific action such as installing software, copying files, or setting up environment variables. Docker then reads these instructions from top to bottom and executes them automatically to create your final Docker image. Now, the third and most famous concept you must understand is the container, right? This is what Docker is famous for. A Docker container is a running instance of a Docker image that executes your application in an isolated environment. It has its own file system, network configuration, and processes, but it shares the host machine operating system kernel, and this allows for efficient scaling. Here are the most useful commands for managing Docker containers, but the most important command is Docker Compose. This is a tool that lets you define and run multiple Docker containers together from a single YAML file. So instead of starting containers one by one, which for more complex projects could take minutes, all you need to do is just write a single file, docker-compose.yaml, and then execute a single terminal command, docker compose up, to launch your entire app and all of the microservices, all the dependencies, all the servers you need for your app to work. For example, this lets you put your whole AI stack into a single terminal command, so the backend, frontend, services, any outside separate AI agents, whatever you have in your AI application. Now, thanks to Docker, scaling is easy. That's because you can run multiple identical Docker containers across many servers to handle more traffic. So when demand spikes, such as when your app goes viral on Twitter, you can quickly spin up more containers and shut them down when the traffic drops. Now, there are orchestration tools to automatically manage scaling, distributing incoming requests across all running containers so that you don't have to sit and managing you know, dozens of Docker containers by yourself. Perhaps the most famous of which is Kubernetes. This is an orchestration tool that manages many containers, doesn't have to be Docker, across many servers automatically. This is why Kubernetes has a reputation for being complex and why many junior engineers are scared of it. But it provides real value because it solves the problem of manually managing a large number of containers by automatic deployment, scaling, and load balancing. So if a container crashes or the server fails, it automatically restarts containers to keep your application running. Now, if we look at the market share of Docker and Kubernetes, you can see that this is a clear monopoly, right? Docker by itself has 88% of the market share when it comes to containerization. And if you add on top of it Kubernetes, 
we're at like 97% or something crazy, right? Which means that if you watch until the end and if you actually learn Docker, you won't have to worry about learning any other tools. This is all you need, so pay attention. Now, you might be thinking, okay, David, but why not just use a virtual machine, right? What even is the difference? Well, virtual machines run a complete operating system, which requires gigabytes of disk, space, and memory, all of which are not free. Docker, on the other hand, shares the resources of the server and only packages the application, which makes Docker containers much more lightweight. It's much easier to run the same app across many environments with containers than managing multiple virtual machines. This brings us to AI agents. Given everything we just talked about, it's not hard to see why Docker is useful for AI. It lets you package everything needed to run or fine tune AI models on your local machine. And it isolates each AI agent to its own container, preventing conflicts when running multiple AI agents. All right, so let me show you how to create your own Docker image. And it's actually very simple. This is the easiest way to get your feet wet with Docker. It takes a couple of minutes and you will break through most of the friction. So just follow what I'm about to do. First off, open a new terminal. And by the way, you can use any IDE, VS Code, cursor, windsurf, whatever you like, right? So open a terminal and create a new folder. We can do that by typing mkdir, which stands for make directory, and then the name of the folder, hello-docker. Boom, folder has been created, as you can see on the right. There it is, it's empty right now. So we need to cd into that folder, aka open it. So cd, he, and then we can press tab to prefill the name. There we go, enter, and you can see that we are inside of the folder right now. Beautiful, let's type clear to reset our terminal. And the next step is to create a Python file. So inside of the folder, let's click on new file. And by the way, you can do this either with the IDE manually or with the terminal as well. I'm gonna name this app.py, boom. And inside of this file, we're gonna do a single print statement. Print, hello, Docker. This is my first image. The simplest Python file imaginable. So make sure to save it with Command S or Control S if you're on Windows. And next, let's create a Docker file. This is another file inside of our folder. So right click, new file, and just name it Docker file. No extension, nothing after it, no spaces, just Docker file with capital D. And inside of this file, we want to paste in a set of instructions. All right, so let me explain what each of these lines does. The first line tells Docker which image it should use. So in this case, we'll use a lightweight version of Python 3.12 as the base image. And this gives us both Linux and Python pre-installed. The second line sets the working directory inside of the container to be slash app. So all the comments after it will run in that directory. The third line in this Docker file copies your local app.py, so this super simple Python script, into the container's current directory. So that's the slash app folder. And the last line in the Docker file defines the default command. So when the container starts, what is the first command it should execute? And in this case, it is run Python app.py. It's literally the equivalent of you opening the terminal and typing that into the terminal yourself. So after you set up the Docker file, make sure to save it. And the next step is to build the image, which we can do with this terminal command right here. So let's open the terminal and let's type in Docker build dash d hello slash docker dot which means everything and hit enter now as you can see i've hit an error and the reason is simple i don't have my docker running so type in docker if you have docker desktop installed it'll just open your docker desktop if you don't have it installed type docker desktop into google click on the first link and simply click on download docker desktop it's completely free. You don't need the paid plan. That's more for companies and enterprises. Now, here's what Docker Desktop actually looks like. It's a nice, simple app that lets you work with Docker with a graphical user interface. So you don't have to remember all the terminal commands. If you have Docker Desktop installed, you can manage your images, containers very easily. Now, the reason I got the error is because Docker Desktop wasn't running. So if we rerun this command, now no error. And you can see that our image is being built. Cursor, which is the ID I'm using, is trying to get permission to access Docker Desktop, so I need to allow that. And just like that, you've began building your first Docker image. And there it is. 20 seconds later, or maybe even less, 15 seconds later, your image has been built. So let's type in clear to reset the terminal. And all that remains is to run the container. So again, open the terminal, and let's do docker run dash dash rm hello docker. Hit enter, and boom. Here's the execution of the Python script, which in this case is a simple print statement, but it didn't execute inside of the terminal, it executed the Docker container. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the whole idea of Docker. You can package your entire program with all the dependencies, all the Python environments, versions, packages, libraries, everything it needs into a single nice Docker container that can be shared and deployed across millions of devices worldwide. It can be distributed to people with completely different computers than you, and it will still work. This is Docker. Hopefully you found this video valuable. 
If you want me to make more in-depth coding and technical tutorials like this one, comment below and make sure to subscribe. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful, productive week. See ya.